Hello friends and welcome. I'm so glad that you could join me today as we study the end times Bible prophecies. Uh, most recently we looked at the book of Joel and saw how the plague of locusts and fire and famine and drought will precede the darkness that we see in Joel chapter 2 uh, that is also further referenced in Acts chapter 2 I believe it's verse 20 uh, so let's go ahead and pray and then I'm going to open the Bible and see what God has to show us Lord Jesus thank you so much for bringing us all together help us to bless you to seek you to offer you the fruit of our lips to praise you God and just continue or to pursue you in these end times and look to your word as our first and foremost and primary source of your prophecy and revelation. Please speak to us through your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, so let's just pop the Bible open. And he is bringing us to the book of Proverbs. And as you can see, I've got lots and lots underlined here. Uh, but it's chapter 19 of the book of Proverbs. If you want to look at that a little further, I'm just going to start and uh, read until God uh, tells me to stop. Better a poor man whose walk is blameless than a fool whose lips are perverse. It is not good to have zeal without knowledge, nor to be hasty and miss the way. A man's own folly ruins his life, yet his heart rages against the Lord. Wealth brings many friends, but a poor man's friend deserts him. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who pours out lies will not go free. Many curry favor with a ruler, and everyone is the friend of a man who gives gifts. A poor man is shunned by all his relatives. How much more do his friends avoid him? Though he pursues them with pleading, they are nowhere to be found. Um, I love the book of Proverbs, and I'm noticing a theme. Careful who you trust. Uh, even our own hearts can fool us. But if we look to the word of God, um, rather than maybe the cacophony of prophecies that are and news uh, stories that are available today, we will find exactly what we need. So I have heard a lot, or I shouldn't say a lot, um, I have heard about the um, the wilderness experience. There are people that are having dreams of going to a place uh, that's not heaven uh, after they've been raptured. It's, I mean, some have a dream about heaven or a banquet or a feast, uh, and then there are others who have dreams of training of going someplace uh, still on earth. Uh, it's not quite the millennial kingdom yet, and it's not heaven. There's going to be about three and a half years that we are hidden here on the earth. We will be the remnant bride learning about Jesus Christ. So I've prayed about this, and the first place that God took me uh, was actually in Ezekiel 20, but I'm going to jump to Revelation 12, just to get an, uh, give an introduction into what we're looking at um, with regard to the remnant. Verse 1 of Revelation 12, I'm sure you've heard this a number of times. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and it cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was Born. So we've got a remnant here represented by the child. The child is about to be born and caught up into heaven. And then we're also going to read a reference about the man child who comes on the scene and will be ruling with a rod of iron. Continuing verse five. And she brought forth 
a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred days and threescore days. So let me back up a little bit. I believe that it's actually the woman, the bride, who is going to represent the remnant. Uh, continuing on, verse 7, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angel, angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and day and night. And I personally want to study this verse a bit more because why would there be rejoicing in heaven and yet there is uh, an additional presence of Satan on the earth? We'll have to find out. Verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice, O ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. I'm sorry, and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, times, and half a time, from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we've got a picture of the woman represented from the Revelation 12 sign that we saw in 2017. God is going to take her from this place of tribulation and wrath and nourish her, the remnant bride, for three and a half years. Having her in a place of safety, the dragon, the red dragon, will now focus his attention to war on the tribulation saints, those who are not actively praying, reading their Bibles, getting to know God and the times that we are in right now. All right. So the first or one of the first passages that the Lord brought me to was Ezekiel chapter 20, starting in verse 40. For on my holy mountain... On the high mountain of Israel, declares the Lord, there the entire house of Israel, all of them will serve me in the land. There I will accept them, and there I will demand your contributions and the choicest of your gifts. With all your holy things, as a soothing aroma, aroma, I will accept you when I bring you out from the peoples and gather you from the lands 
where you were scattered. And I will show myself to the holy among you in the sight of the nations. And you will know that I am the Lord when I bring you into the land of Israel, into the land which I swore to give your forefathers. And there you will remember your ways and all your deeds by which you have defiled yourself and you will loathe yourselves in your own sight for all the evil things that you have done. Then you will know that I am the Lord when I have dealt with you in behalf of my name, not according to your evil ways or according to your corrupt deeds, house of Israel, declares the Lord. All right. So as we have seen numerous times in the Bible, there can be a double application for many of these passages. So this very well applied to those coming out of Babylonia, the exiles. But this can also have a application to those who are being drawn out of the world as a whole and being placed on God's holy mountain. It's not because um, we have earned it. It's not because we deserve it. It's because we are in right relationship with God uh, recognizing him, who he is, for as much as we can with our human uh, capabilities. But I also want to, even before verse 40, I want to look at verse 39 because I think that is so applicable for today. Uh, as for you, house of Israel, this is what the Lord God says. Go serve every one of you his idols, but later you will certainly listen to me. And my holy name you will no longer defile with your gifts and your idols. We see that God is so patient. He's like, you know, I know you're going to fail. I know you're going to go worship these idols of safety and yes, we can and whatever slogans are being thrown around. Go ahead, go learn that that is not the way to go. Go get your, your chip, your mark, your injection, whatever. You are going to come back to me in repentance once you learn why you were left behind, why God has to bring his wrath. Continuing. Uh, next, I uh, as I did some research into uh, Strong's Concordance about the word remnant, and I just uh, did, I didn't try to go into different languages, but I just, just looked at that word remnant, and I found a lot of information that was very pertinent from the book of Zephaniah. And I'm going to read some, in, uh, some excerpts from the this uh, book isn't a long book. It's just three chapters. Uh, we're going to look at that, and then we're going to take a look at the book of Romans, uh, one that I have referenced a lot with regards to uh, salvation and repentance and God's will for us in these end times. So Zephaniah chapter 1, a day of judgment. The word of the Lord which came to Zephaniah, son of Cushi, son of Jedaliah, son of Amariah, son of Hezekiah, in the days of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, I will completely remove all things from the face of the earth, declares the Lord. I will remove human and animal life. I will remove the birds from the sky and the fish of the sea and the ruins along with the wicked. And I will eliminate mankind from the face of the earth, declares the Lord. All right, so this is obviously a prophecy that has not yet been fulfilled. This prophecy is for us today. So I will stretch out my hand against Judah and against all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will eliminate the remnant of Baal from this place. And the names of the idolatrous priests, along with the other priests and those who bow down on the housetops to the heavenly lights, and those who bow down and swear to the Lord, but also swear by Milcom, let me see if that, or, uh, okay, the Ammonite God, 
and those who have turned back from following the Lord and those who have not sought the Lord or inquired of him. So we're looking at this in terms of criteria right now, uh, especially verse six, those who have turned back from following the Lord, those who have not sought the Lord or inquired of him. We we need to inquire of him. Those who are inquiring of him, doesn't matter what they've done, they'll go and do that and then they'll come back when they realize that God is the only true God in the universe or at all that does exist. Uh, when they have turned back to him. Uh, let's pick up in verse 11. Will you inhabitants of the mortar because of the because all the people of Canaan will be destroyed. All who weigh out silver will be eliminated. We can't put our trust in anything beyond Jesus Christ right now. Verse 12, And it will come about at that time that I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who are stagnant in spirit, who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good nor harm. We're, we're not in the tribulation. That's not coming up. You've got plenty of time. We saw a couple of videos ago, God uh, brought us to the book of Daniel, where it said, you are buying time. You're just buying time. You're deceiving the people. Verse uh, 13, their wealth will become plunder and their houses desolate. Yes, they will build houses, but not inhabit them and plant vineyards, but not drink their wine. The great day of the Lord is near, near and coming very quickly. Listen, the day of the Lord. In it, the warrior cries out bitterly. That day is a day of anger, a day of trouble and distress, a day of destruction and desolation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. The darkness is coming. A day of trumpet and battle cry. A battle cry, the second horseman, the trumpet uh, bringing us away as the remnant bride into the wilderness. Against the fortified cities and the high corner towers. This is These are the big cities. Uh, perhaps like Manhattan. I've heard that that city is the a whore of Babylon who sits on many waters and engages in trade all around the earth. Verse 17, I will bring distress on mankind so that they will walk like those who are blind. Well, if there's darkness, yeah. Because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood will be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's anger. And all the earth will be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. Okay, we saw fire in the book of Joel, chapters 1 and 2. For he will make a complete end, indeed a horrifying one, of all the inhabitants of the earth. Chapter 2 of the book of Zephaniah. Gather yourselves together. Yes, join together, you nation without shame. Before the decree takes effect, the day passes like chaff. Before the burning anger of the Lord comes upon you. Before the day of the Lord's anger comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all ye humble of the earth who have practiced his ordinances, seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will remain hidden on the day of the Lord's anger. Pastors, please humble yourselves. Don't try to be the funny, likable guy. And don't align yourselves with those who would sacrifice to Moloch or Kamash. Be free of that. Live for Jesus Christ, and don't worship uh, Kamash or Malik and God. He's not going to put up with that. He sure, certainly will not. 
Verse 4 of chapter 2 of Zephaniah. For Gaza will be abandoned, and Ashkelon will become a desolation. The inhabitants of Ashdod will be driven out at noon. And that should be also familiar of those who have been listening for the three days of darkness. It will happen around noon. Ekron will be uprooted. Woe to the inhabitants of the sea coast. We've been hearing prophecies against the coasts, the coastlines, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, Canaan, land of the Philistines, and I will eliminate you so that there will be no inhabitant. So the sea coast will become grazing places with pastures for shepherds and folds for flocks. And the coast will be for the remnants of the house of Judah. They will drive sheep to pasture in it. And the houses of Eshkelon, they will lie down at evening. For the Lord their God will care for them and restore their fortunes. I have heard the taunting of Moab and the abusive speech of the sons of Ammon with which they have taunted my people and boasted against their territory. Therefore, as I live, declares the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, Moab will assuredly be like Sodom and the sons of Ammon like Gomorrah, ground overgrown with weeds and full of salt mines and a permanent desolation. The remnant of my people will plunder them and the remainder of my nation will inherit them and this goes back to revelation 12 the last 12 the last verse where satan is preparing war against the saints this is the latter part of that war now it says moab manhattan new york however the united states the whore of babylon will be like Sodom. Well, why? Why would God do this to the United States? Well, we saw in Lamentations 3 that this happened to the people of Judah before the Babylonian captivity. Good, bad, indifferent. There were enough sins accumulated against that land that God had in his righteousness and his justice take vengeance on it. So how is the United States as bad or some say even worse than Sodom and Gomorrah? Not only are there lewd acts and animal or child sacrifice in the United States, but we even have parades celebrating many of these detestable things. We can't keep doing this. Our God is a holy God. He is uncreated and he will seek to make things right. Continuing on to chapter 3 of the book of Zephaniah, I'm going to jump down to verse 8. Therefore wait for me, declares the Lord, for the day when I rise up as a witness. Indeed, my decision is to gather nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour out on them my indignation, all my burning anger. For all the earth will be devoured before the fire Joel chapter 1 and 2 of my zeal. For then I will restore to the people's pure lips, so that all of them may call on the name of the Lord to serve him shoulder to shoulder. For from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my worshipers, my dispersed ones, will bring my offerings. On that day you will feel no shame because of all your deeds by which You have rebelled against me. For then I will remove from your midst your proud, arrogant ones, and you will never again be haughty on my holy mountain. Now there are people who have received revelation that there will be more than one rapture, more than one gathering of the remnant. And Brenda Weltner is one of them. If I remember, I will put that video in here. Um, But those who are proud and arrogant, they're not going to make that rapture. They're not going to come to the wilderness until they show God that they have acquired that humble and contrite spirit with which the older 
exiles were comforted when they saw, as we see, I believe it's in the book of Ezekiel, when the younger, uh, when the, what the remnant that stayed in Jerusalem saw when the uh, exiles returned from Babylonia, I should say. Verse 12, the remnant of Israel, but I will leave among you a humble and lowly people, and they will take refuge in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel will do no wrong and tell no lies, nor will a deceitful tongue be found in their mouths. For they will feed and lie down and know with no one to frighten them. Uh, I've looked at the playlist of uh, Sister Carrie Ann Gidden, who God has revealed to me is a multi-generational prophetess. And she talks about this place where there's just, you feel love. You feel love. You are with other believers and you are learning about God. You are learning about Jesus Christ. It is a very safe place. Verse 14, shout for joy, daughter of Zion. Just like this, a safe place. Shout in triumph, Israel. Rejoice and triumph with all your heart, daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away his judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. You are in safety. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You'll be le learning from him in this wilderness experience. You will no longer fear disaster. And again, Zephaniah was writing about end times. And this is another part of that. On that day, it will be said to Jerusalem, do not be afraid, O Zion. Do not let your ha hands ha fall limp. The Lord your God is in your midst, a victorious warrior. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will will be quiet in his love. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. I will gather those who are worried about the appointed feasts. They came from you, Zion. The disgrace of exile is a burden on them. Behold, I am going to deal at that time with all your oppressors. I will save those who limp and gather the scattered, and I will turn their shame into praise and fame in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you in. Even at that time when I gather you together, indeed, I will make you famous and praiseworthy among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. All right, now we're going to look at Romans chapter 9, and then we're going to close it up. Uh, just a short passage, only maybe uh, eight verses. But this is also showing the remnant from the New Testament perspective. Along with the book of Revelation, they are also referred to in Romans 9. I'm going to start with verse 22. What if God, although willing to demonstrate his wrath, and to make his power known, endured with great patience objects of wrath prepared for destruction. Okay, some people think that just because you took an injection, oh, you're prepared for destruction. Well, has God really called for a mass exodus from our hospitals, police force, our military, uh, our teaching and our schools, our education? Has he really called for that right now? I don't know. Pray about it and let us know. If God tells you, that is something that he has orchestrated at this time. But what I'm seeing is, yes, while things are being orchestrated by the first four uh, horsemen, uh, God has not called for people to just walk away from their jobs. And if they have taken that injection, uh, it turns out that there are tests showing that there is no mRNA at least in the Pfizer injection. Okay, people's DNA is not being corrupted. They are getting graphene oxide, which apparently is magnetizing them. But we, at least this is what God has called me to do, is to love people. Uh, Stephen Benoon referenced a very interesting passage. I believe it's uh, it's either an Acts or Hebrews. Uh, the poison of the viper will not harm them. Of the viper will not harm them. Let me see if I can find that. 
Okay, well, actually, we've got it. One reference in the book of Mark, chapter 16. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. Oh, would God really do that? Does God really love people enough to protect them? Well, yes, he does. Praise the Lord. He's not a God of, oh, gotcha. That's not our God. And it's so unfortunate that some people have that view of him. Don't follow them. Just just free yourself from that legalism and cacophony of, oh, this is happening and this is going to happen and blah, blah, blah. They will place their hands on the sick. Oh, really? These same people? And they will get well. People, this is our God. Read his Bible. If you want to know the end times and what it's all about, what he is doing, it's right here. He's got a grace, mercy, and love. And we're going to see that as we continue. Verse 23 of Romans 9, and he did so to make known the riches of his glory upon his objects of what? Mercy, which he prepared beforehand. Oh, there's an order here? Yes, for glory, namely us. Oh, us? Yes, us, whom he also called, not only from among the Jews, but also from among the Gentiles or, or fill in whatever. He loves people. We are made in his image. We are born in his likeness. God's not going to just suddenly let us be corrupted. That's not the God we serve. He said in his word, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I'll try to remember to put that into the description where you can read the context of that. Verse 25, he also says in Hosea, I will call those who were not my people. Maybe some people want to say that they were unredeemable. That's certainly how the Jews viewed the Gentiles at one time, and perhaps still depends on who you talk to. I will call those who were not my people, my people. God's created all people. And her who was not my beloved, beloved. And it shall be that in that place where it was said to them, you are not my people, there they shall be called sons of the living God. Well, who would call them not God's people? Don't do that, please. God will forgive us. He's so merciful and gracious. But please do not surround yourself with these awful voices of God's changing or letting people's DNA be changed. God does conduct the bow as we see in Lamentations 3.12. Yeah, he does. So we will repent. So we will repent. And it shall be that in that, in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, there they shall be called sons of the living God. Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, though the number of the sons of Israel may be like the sand of the sea, only the remnant will be saved. This is Romans talking about the remnant. Revelation talking about the remnant. For the Lord will execute his word on the earth. We just saw that in Zephaniah. Thoroughly and quickly. And just as Isaiah foretold, if the Lord of armies had not left us descendants, we would have become like Sodom. And would have been like Gomorrah. All right. And again, that was uh, chapter 9. Let me read the next verse, verse 30. What shall we say then? That Gentiles or whomever who did not pursue righteousness, who weren't perfect, attained righteousness. But the righteousness that is by faith, however, Israel pursuing a law of righteousness did not arrive at that law. Oh, these people who thought they were so holy because they did that or they didn't do that. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith. It is faith, lest any man should boast. But as though they could, by works, they stumbled over the stumbling stone. Just as it is written, behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And the one who believes in him will not be put to shame. Think about what we read from Proverbs. 
put your faith in him alone. People, they're going to say things. They're going to come and go. Ah, I just opened two Proverbs. Proverbs 1, actually. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and discipline. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They waylay only themselves. These people pray before you listen to anybody that calls themselves a prophet or a prophetess. Verse 19, such is the end of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the lives of those who get it. Wisdom calls aloud in the streets. She raises her voice in the public squares. At the head of the noisy streets, she cries out. In the gateways of the city, she makes her speech. Lord, we have heard of judgment against Moab, against Manhattan, against cities, against America, against the populace, Lord. Give us wisdom on how to prepare for what you have for us, not to live in fear, but with courage in righteousness and humility. Lord, a contrite spirit you will not despise. Thank you. Because so many in this world will. Thank you that we can put our trust in you. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. That is Psalm chapter 20, verse 7. Thank you so much for coming. I hope to see you again and enjoy your day. Please comment with your thoughts. Thank you. Bye-bye.